Hi everyone, and welcome to the Space Claim tutorial by Scutio. Today, we are going to see how to model a 3D printable object. Please note that this tutorial is aimed at people who are already comfortable with modeling with Space Claim and want to learn more about best practices when modeling for 3D printing. I'm going to demonstrate some of the best practices by creating a bridge with a car and a sphere in a box on it, step by step. Let's get started! The first thing to be careful of is minimal thickness. Each material has a minimum flexible thickness and a minimum rigid thickness. You can find all these data on our website in the materials section. Here I am creating a 2mm thick hatch with the minimum rigid thickness of a plastic material. The next good habit for modeling in space claim is to associate one solid with one component. Otherwise space claim is going to combine the solids which makes it impossible to come back later to change things. However, it is important to be careful not to create intersecting objects. Here, we see that the top of the bridge is interested in the arch. If you want to 3D print this model in its current state, the 3D printer is very likely to encounter problems. So let's use the combine tool to solve this issue. Let's study a typical error, the non-manifold component. A non-manifold component is basically something that you can model in digital space but cannot exist in real life. Surfaces with zero volume are one thing to be avoided, but all the types of problems exist. I'm going to create a car that looks solid by drawing four square wheels and pulling a foam from the body. What we can see here is that space claim does not combine the solids in the structure panel because there is no physical link between the solids. If we zoom in, we realize that the wheels are linked to the body only by edges, which is not possible in real life. By pulling the body down, I make it a manifold solid, and Space Slim combines the remaining solids automatically since they are part of the same component. If I decide to extend my bridge and move the car to the far end, I might have a considerable top, which could probably break, even if the minimal thickness is accounted for. This is why I'm adding a support. Let's add a stand to this bridge so we can put it on the desk and add some text to it. Here, I have a quite big solid that is going to require a lot of material, which means it's going to cost more. In order to avoid that, I can hollow or shell it, with two options. Shell my body fully by clicking on the solid and then creating begin of hole so we can remove the powder from inside. The bigger the holes are, the better. I can also shell the object and remove the bottom face by clicking on it. This is the most economical option, but it is not always possible. To make it look cooler, I'm going to add some text. You can retrieve the full text solidity guidelines on our website, but for plastic, the minimal thickness is 0.5mm with a text as wide as it is thick. The last feature I'd like to showcase is the possibility to create interlocking parts, which is something that makes 3D printing amazing. I'm basically going to put a sphere in a box. So I create a box. Then I add some holes. And here comes the sphere. I'm going to use a section view to make sure that my sphere is inside the box. I also leave some space between the sphere and the wall, at least 0.5mm, to make sure that the ball will move freely. Now, let's start the most important step, combining solids. In order to have a 3D printable file, each printed object must be in a separate component, forming only one solid. A good habit is to save a version with the separate components and one with only as many solids as there will be printed objects. 
Here, I'm going to have two separate components, the sphere and the rest of the bridge. I am combining the stand and the arch, but the support cannot be merged with them. When I zoom in, I realize that the support is flat, while the arch is curved. So I pull the support up to the arch and use the combine tool again. I keep combining solids and dilled useless components until I have only one main body on my sphere. Our object is theoretically ready to be 3D printed, but we are going to use the RCL editing tools to check the mesh and have more control over it. So. I'm going to check my model thanks to the new SCL editing tools. First, I convert my solids to meshes and I use the check mesh tool to make sure that there are no problems in my model. I realize that my arch is not detailed enough so I can make the mesh more detailed thanks to the smooth tool. I will check my mesh, it's all good. I want to check that all my parts are thick enough so I use the thickness analysis tool with a 1.2mm threshold. In fact, the minimal thickness for flexible plastic is 0.8mm and my design is 1mm thick so I'll keep it like this. I can now export my design as an STL file to print it. Last but not least, I upload my design to SchoolTU.com and take care to select the appropriate multipad option. Here, because of the sphere, I need to choose single object, otherwise my sphere will be printed as a separate part, out of its box, which is obviously not what we want. My design is shown and if I use the online reviewing tools, I can confirm that the solidity of my model is fine. Now you know how to model on space claim for 3D printing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, here is a summary of some of the best practices when modeling for 3D printing with space claim. Don't forget that if you want to save money, you can also shell the non-critical parts. If you want to learn more about how to repair an object that has not been properly modeled, please check out the next part of our Space Glam tutorial. Enjoy modeling and see you soon on SkillTio.com.